Hello, friends. How are we all? I bet we're all a lot bigger than I remember. You guys have probably grown massive amounts. And I cannot wait to see how tall you are and to see if any of you are taller than me yet, which wouldn't be very hard. Okay, so let's get right on to it. So today we're going to be looking at King Saul and what he got up to in the Bible, which is 1 Samuel, if you guys wanted to read the whole story. I don't think we'll be able to go through all of it today because it's quite long, but um, there's a lot that's going on. So if you did want to look into it, it would be number one, Samuel. A bit of the backstory about how King Saul comes into power is Israel. Um, they don't have a king, basically. So as we know, I don't know, do we know that um, the Israelites, the Hebrews, were enslaved to the Egyptians, you know, with Moses and everyone, Moses and Aaron, and then God brought them out of slavery, you know, when Moses split the Red Sea. Um, so they are now their own people and they don't have a king. And everyone wants them to have a king, even though God is essentially their king, but they don't want, they're not happy with them. They want an actual figure, an actual person. Um, so they ask God for a king and he gives them their request. So cue King Saul into the scene. So Saul at this moment, um, he has been sent out by his father to look for, I think it was a donkey. He lost, his father lost a donkey. So Saul is just out in the, um, on the road looking for this donkey. Now, when a lot of people preach this, they always make a big point about to say how God very much favoured Saul. He, he, they, um, in the, in the Bible, even, can't speak, and um, in the Bible they describe him as very handsome. He, Saul was the most good looking guy you have ever seen. He was um, head and shoulders above the crowd, so he was not only tall, but he also had good facial features. So his dad was actually from, I mean, his descendancy was from the tribe Benjamin, of the, um, the Benjamin tribe. So they weren't very big people, so I guess that kind of shows that they were in humble beginnings. So he didn't come from a lot to become king all of a sudden. Anyway, so he's out of and about looking for this donkey of his dad's that he's lost. Um, and then he, so there's this other guy called Samuel, Q Samuel. So he comes onto the scene and he's like, they call him the seer because he can see into things. Like he's able to predict, or predict, well, like he just knows what's going on. So um, they say, let's go find Samuel and maybe he'll tell us where the donkeys are. So they go find Samuel or Samuel finds them. And um, God actually points out Samuel, God actually points out Saul to Samuel um, and says that's the person that I want to be king. So um, Samuel takes Saul with him and they go and eat a meal together up in some place um, and, and Samuel basically explains how he God has appointed him to be king and when they're departing he anoints him with some oil on the head and says um, there are certain things that are going to happen to you on your way home um, and after this all succeeds, then you're going to be ready to be king. So let's take a minute and think about, whoa, what has just happened? He, one minute, King Saul, or not even, he's not even king yet. Saul is just out looking for a donkey and the next minute he's a king. Imagine how crazy that would have been. What would you feel like if one day you went to school and then, I don't know, your teacher says, oh, you're going to be, you're going to have to reign you're going to have to rule over a country when you get home without any preparation or anything like that. How would you be feeling? His life literally changed and went upside down in a matter of, I don't know, maybe a day or two. But we pause for a minute and let's see what kind of kings and queens we'd be. What would be the first rules that you would make if you were ever a queen or king? And you can write them down and then when we see each other, we can share them, hey? So we're going to fast forward a bit in the story. So Samuel becomes king. Um, he goes to battle and to war um, with quite a, a few times and he wins. So he's gotten quite used to and quite um, been quite comfortable being king. And then one day the Philistines, who are the, let's say that they're the enemy, I guess, um, they decide to um, come up against Israel again. So they've already been... Um, beaten essentially and then they decide that they want to go to war again with Israel um, however Israel's army which was King Saul's army 
they were weak and they had poor weapons so they weren't prepared for another battle basically so with this threat of war coming in um king saul started to panic a little because he saw how small his army was um he panicked and he didn't trust in the power of god or he just kind of trusted in his own kind of what he could see so he saw he had a bad army or a weak army there weren't many numbers he didn't have very good weapons um he he had kind of forgotten about his journey about how he became king um how god had anointed him in the beginning um and he kind of yeah he just kind of just saw what was in front of him rather than trusting in god even though in so many of the battles before that he had won he had never won through his own power but he had won through god's God had always sent um, thunder and lightning, or he had always intervened and helped with the battles. Um, and that is actually how they were won. They weren't really won through King Saul's strength. Um, so commonly when people talk about King Saul, they talk about the rise and the fall of King Saul. So in his journey to being king, he starts off very obedient. Like, as we were saying, within a day, he his life basically changed and he was very obedient to God. Um, in fact, when he was actually crowned king, he they called him up to the stage or whatever. Let's pretend it was a stage, and they said, "Oh, this is meet your king." And he was hiding behind the dumpster. <laughs> he was he didn't think he was um, adequate enough for it, to be a king. Um, and then I guess he what we would say today is he got too big for his boots, um, and he just started trying to take things into his own hands a little. So what do we think we could learn from King Saul? Let's take a minute. I think it's important for us to recognise that whenever we feel unprepared, much like um, King Saul was feeling unprepared for this battle, um, we need to realise that we're not on our own. And we always need to remember that God has brought us to where we are today. Um, he's not just going to leave us because we're scared of what's coming. No matter how big the other side looks, no matter how many... Um, how much army is in the other side of the enemy has we we have someone who's so much stronger which is God and he's always going to fight our battles for us we're never alone and we never really have to fear because um, I don't know if you guys know that um, bible verse in Corinthians and it says how um, God's grace is made perfect in our weak weakness so without us being weak we never really allow God to take control of our lives um, I think that's quite important for us, especially in what we're living through now when there's so much uncertainty. Okay, so not only does um, King Saul panic at this kind of call that the Philistines are up against him with a bigger army and better weapons, um, but also um, he, so there's a little ritual that they do that Samuel would have had to done would have had to do as a prophet um where they do a sacrifice to god i think it was and samuel doesn't turn up for a few days so he's a bit late um he doesn't turn up and this is quite a sacred ritual so only a prophet can do it and king saul decides that he can do it he gets a bit worried and anxious because all his people are like oh we need to do it we need to there's a bit of a rush and he kind of listens to the people and he breaks god's command and he does it himself, which is a big no. So that is essentially the beginning of where it all goes wrong for him. And that is all because he was impatient and he cared more about what others thought rather than what God wanted him to do or what um, God had kind of commanded. So I think if we link that to the fruits of the spirit and one being patience, um, that clearly wasn't a thing of God, that impatience. So that's a little bit of King Saul's journey. There's a lot that he does. Then um, later on, he gets into this whole thing with David. Um, if you guys remember David and Goliath, you know, the big giant and the slingshot. Um, you can read that all in First Samuel as well. Um, but yeah. Okay, so again, 1 Samuel, if you guys did were, want to have a read of that, it's quite good. There's a lot that goes on. But first, um, I'm just going to quickly pray, and then you guys are free to go. Um, dear God, thank you that we're still able to meet each other through the screen, although we haven't been able to see each other face to face in a while. Um, we know that you always have a plan for everything, and that 
even in the midst of uncertainty you are still always in control and you're always at the center of everything nothing happens without your say so i pray that we won't be scared or anxious that we'll always trust that you have a greater and better plan for us um i pray that we can learn from king saul and his mistakes that we are always um listening to you and becoming more obedient to you that we don't go against your word um just because of what other people say or their opinions of us um but we always look to you for as our help and our source of provision i pray that um within our day to day we're able to become more patient and more like you and be in a better relationship with you i pray that whenever we feel unprepared or that um the enemy is always greater than us we always remember that you're greater than anything else and that you've conquered this world and you've conquered everything in it and that we can trust you to take control of our lives in jesus name we pray amen thanks guys we'll see you next time